This is Javal's rule in predicting astigmatism for B551. Let's review quickly the optical power of the human eye. The cornea, cornea provides approximately two thirds of the power of the eye, and it's the primary source of astigmatism, especially when patients are younger. A normal curvature range for the, for the cornea is about 41 to 46 diopters. We also have the lens that provides about a third of the power of the eye, and it's a, a secondary source of astigmatism initially, but it increases in astigmatism throughout life. Axial length needs about 60 diopters to focus images onto the retina. It's the primary source though of hyperopia and my, myopia. Well, let's look at these two sources of astigmatism. There's lenticular astigmatism, which is due in part to the lens curvature and to extent the tilt of the lens. The lenticular induced astigmatism changes with age it's weakest in children and increases as the lens grows. And it, it grows more against the rule over the course of your lifetime. It's a smaller contributor to the total astigmatism again, but it increases with age, but it's not measurable, clinically at least. Research grade, we can measure it, but not in the clinic. Let's compare that to corneal astigmatism. Corneal astigmatism is entirely due to the curvature of the cornea. And it's largely stable throughout life, with the exception of trauma or, or surgery to the cornea itself. Some major contributors, it's a major contributor of astigmatism at young ages and less at older ages. And it is measurable through keratometry or corneal topography. Because lenticular astigmatism is unmeasurable clinically, we have to estimate it. There are a large number of estimation methods, but most are not used clinically. We do have a few rules out there that we do use clinically, Javal's rule, simplified Javal's rule, and an age-based Javal's rule. For the purposes, though, of this course, you'll really only need to focus on simplified Javal's rule, which is generally on the boards. Javal's rule, the initial one, not the simplified one, was a first estimated back in the late 1800s, and it was a simple rule, which is you took the difference in the corneal planes, the corneal astigmatism, and you took it times 1.25, then subtracted out a half diopter against the rule. With the rule, astigmatism is then reduced by the lenticular induced astigmatism, and against the rule is increased by the lenticular induced astigmatism. And this is true of everything, is that the lens provides against the rule astigmatism, the cornea typically provides with the rule astigmatism, and so the difference between those two is the amount of of astigmatism in our glasses prescriptions. When asked for the estimated astigmatism error, always give it in minus cylinder form. Therefore, when the calculations ends with a plus cylinder, convert it to minus cylinder. And that's by switching the sign and then changing the axis 90 degrees. If you're in the wrong axis or the wrong sill, it will be marked wrong. Javal's rule, though, has problems. It tends to overrate as estimate astigmatism. It works better the larger the change in astigmatism or the difference in astigmatism. And it will slightly underestimate hyperopic astigmatism and overestimate myopic astigmatism. It's also very poor at small astigmatism, which is the most common type. It's also bad with children and older patients, to be honest with you. It works better on a few older patients who have some lenticular changes, but not uh, severe ones. And this error stems from Javal's initial data back in the 1890s, where he was mostly working with older patients, the accuracy of the instruments was poor, and it had a relatively small sample size or small number of patients in the study. That was modified by Theodore Grovesner, an IU professor. Here you can see one of his common books that he wrote back in the 90s and 2000s. There's a picture of him, and he's an IU professor here for many years, 20, 30 years. Due to the poor predictability of Javal's rule, Dr. Ted Grovesner redid Javal's rule with a larger study in 1988, using over 1,000 patients, including children. He found that about 0.84 times the change in, in astigmatism minus 0.40 at 90 gave a better fit than Javal's and proposed a simpler rule. Javal's simple rule was, very, was, was just essentially the eye provides a half diopter of against the rule astigmatism lenticularly. So the rule is to figure out the total astigmatism in the spectacle plane, take their 
corneal astigmatism minus the lenticular astigmatism, and that will give you your spectacle predicted astigmatism. Uh, this gave closer estimates for adults with astigmatism as well as children. It worked well for small to moderate levels of astigmatism. So let's look at some examples. Here's a patient whose corneal keratometry is 42 at 180 by 4350 at 90. The first step is to determine which the flattest meridian is. In this case, the 42 at 180. So that means the cornea is with the rule and our predicted, predicted corneal astigmatism is at axis 180. Now the difference between them, or the delta K, is 43 and a half minus 42, or 1.5 diopters of corneal astigmatism at 180. We then take the corneal astigmatism plus the lenticular astigmatism to figure out the predicted astigmatism. So we have one and a half diopters at 180 and a half diopter at 90. The half diopter at 90 will subtract because it's smaller than the 150. So we will then have one diopter of astigmatism at 180. Let's look at another example. Here we have 45 and a quarter at 180 and 44 and a half at 90. In this case, the flattest K is at 90, making this an against the rule cornea. That means the predicted astigmatism axis will be 90. The difference in corneal curvature is 44 and a half minus 45.25, or 0.75 diopters at 90. We then add that to our internal astigmatism. So we have our corneal astigmatism at 0.75 at 90, and our internal astigmatism, lenticular astigmatism, is a half diopter at 90, resulting in a total astigmatism of 1.25 at 90. Some people might ask, which rule to use? For the purposes of this class, you will only need to use simplified Cheval's rule. However, some general rules of thumb, if you were going to apply this in clinic, is if the difference in the corneal astigmatism is two and a half diopters or under, you should use the simplified rule. If it's over two and a half diopters, you should use the standard rule. Another rule of thumb is if, the, if it's younger, use Grosvenor's. If it's older, use the Javal's. However, most clinicians suggest the simplified rule for all situations. What about predicting oblique astigmatism? Neither Javal's rule nor Grosvenor's simplified rule are valid for oblique astigmatism. This is due to the poor ability of these rules to predict oblique astigmatism, and usually oblique astigmatism represents corneal disease like keratoconus. But what about overall, how often do we use this? In reality, neither Javal's rule nor the simplified rule is more accurate than actually measuring the, cornea, the astigmatism in the spectacle plane. Auto refraction, retinoscopy, and subjective refraction are all far superior at measuring the true spectacle astigmatism than any prediction rule because we can't measure the internal astigmatism. So for that reason, we primarily do not use either of these rules in the clinic and rather focus on what we can actually measure, such as autofraction, retinoscopy, and subjective refraction. So what's the take-home points if we don't use Javal's rule all that much in clinic? Well, the first and biggest reason is Javal's rule is on the boards. But more importantly, what's the take-home? Against the rule astigmatism increases with age. Expect more against the rule or less with the rule astigmatism as patients return. So if a patient comes back for a follow-up visit and they're a little more against the rule, that's totally normal. However, if you, if you see a shift to more with the rule, that should be a warning to you that you've either perhaps made an error or maybe there's underlying systemic problems like diabetes and their blood sugar has induced changes in the lenses. Thank you. The end.